In this video, we're going to look at how many different groups we can have with cardinality 4. And first remember that a group is first and foremost a binary structure. And there are 4 to the 16 different binary structures for a set with 4 elements. So there's a huge amount of possible structures we have to look at here. And if you don't know how I got this number, you can click on this link to understand binary operation tables and how to calculate the number of different binary structures. Now we need to find out how many of these 4 to the 16 different structures are actually groups. To do this, we will take a set S with 4 elements, which we will call E, A, B, and C. We use E here to represent the identity element, since we know this set must have an identity element in order to be a group. Now we have to set up a binary operation table to see how many different operations we can combine with this set to make a group. This table is what we call a Cayley table. So to start off with, we will list the elements, then we will need to fill in all the different possibilities. Now before I move on, let's write down some properties we know about groups. First we know it must have an identity. So since we said E was the identity, we can fill out the first row and first column like this. Another property we know is that it must be closed under inverses. So every element of the set must have an inverse in the set and it also must be closed under the binary operation. So every combination of elements must return an element in the set. So the only elements that can show up in this table are the elements in the set. We also know the operation must be associative. And then finally we have this last property, which is less obvious than the ones above that were really just taken from the definition of a group. This property is that every element must appear exactly once in each row and column. So since we have an A here, we can't have another A in this column. Same here, since we have an A here, we can't have another A in this row. And to see the proof of this last property, you can click on this link here. So now with this last property in mind, let's go back and try to finish this binary operation table. In this spot here, we can't have an A since we already have an A in this column and an A in this row. So we can either put an E, a B, or a C. Let's go ahead and put an E and see what happens. So since we have an A and an E in this row, we need a B and a C to complete it. The B obviously can't be here, since we already have a B here. So that tells us we need a C in this spot. And then the last spot will put a B. And similarly, down here we need a B and a C, but we can't have the B here. So we'll put the C and then the B. Now we need an A and an E to complete this row. Also, we need an A and an E to complete this column. And there really aren't any restrictions for what we choose for this spot, so we can either choose an A or an E. And we wouldn't be breaking any of these rules. So let's just go ahead and put in an A and see what happens. Now that we have an A, we have to finish off this row with an E. We also have to finish off this column with an E. And then this final row and column both need an A. So this will be one binary operation table we get that can form a group with the set S. But this might not be the only binary operation we can get, because here we chose an E where we could have said that this could equal B or C. And here we also chose an A where we could have chosen E. So this one definitely makes a group with four elements, but there might be more groups. So let's look at how this table would change if we didn't choose A here, but we instead chose E. So the first part we're going to keep the same, but now instead of choosing A, we're going to choose E. Then the rest of the table must be filled out this way. And this is still another valid option for a group. Now let's look at the table where we don't choose E here, but we can choose B. So of course this part will always be the same, but now we're going to put a B here instead of an E. Now we know this column needs a C and an E, but the C can't be in this spot, so we must have the C here. And for the same reasons for this row, the C must be in this spot. Then we can finish this column with an E and this row with an E. Now we see that this column needs both an A and an E. But the E obviously can't be here, so we must put the A here and the A here on this side as well. And then the E to complete that row and the B to complete this final row. So this is another possibility for a table that completes a group. You can also create this last table by putting a C here and then filling all the elements in accordingly. So these are the four groups we've come up with and we'll call them A, B, C, and D. But not all of these groups are different. 
Actually, three of these groups are the same. A, C, and D are all isomorphic, and you can check that by finding the isomorphisms between them. For example, the isomorphism that transforms the group A into the group C is the function that sends A to B and B to A, while keeping E and C the same. So we're going to say A is isomorphic to C, and C is isomorphic to D. So really what that tells us is that for any set with four elements, there are actually only two unique groups. Another way to express that is that there are only two unique groups up to isomorphism. Now let's look at the group containing the set of integers modulo 4 with addition modulo 4. The binary operation table for this group is shown here, and if you compare it with the group which we called C, by changing 0 to E, 1 to A, 2 to B, and 3 to C, you can see that these groups are clearly isomorphic. Now let's look at the group containing the set of integers modulo 2 crossed with itself, and this set is just the set containing these four elements, and then we'll say this addition operation here is given by the element AB plus the element CD would equal A plus C where this addition is modulo 2, and B plus D where this addition is modulo 2. So this is not the regular addition operation, it's the addition operation given by this relation. And the binary operation table for this addition would look like this. And this group is called the Klein 4 group. And you might see it being represented by a capital V or a K sub 4. These are all just symbols to represent this group, which is called the Klein 4 group. Now if we compare this Klein 4 group to our group B, we can see that by making these changes that these two groups are actually isomorphic. So what we've done here is actually shown that any group with four elements must be isomorphic to either the integers modulo 4 or the Klein 4 group. So these are our two groups up to isomorphism. And that concludes this video. See you next time.